Maido, hi there Japan fans. Today's show we're going to talk about really hardcore, tight, rigid speech content and how to deliver that. Present o Master Shima Show. This is the seventh year of the Presentation Japan Series podcast. We are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato Ku in Tokyo. And I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Carnegie Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Carnegie Tokyo Training, and the three time best selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training de Okane o Mude ni Suno wa Yamimasho. And all are available on Amazon. Through this podcast, I want to help you to become a better speaker, to be one, clear, two, confident, three, persuasive, and four, highly influential with those around you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy. That does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast, and Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. This is episode number 359, and today we're talking about how to present when the topic is unforgiving. In some professions, there's a lot of media scrutiny on what the speaker is saying. The organization they represent also has very strict rules around who. Can say what. This makes giving the presentation very restrictive and difficult. Usually, the people in that line of work are used to giving these types of presentations, so they are accustomed to being very guarded in their remarks. They also become very guarded in the way they deliver the presentation. The danger is the message transmission is being killed off. By the restrictions and rigidities of the content and their delivery methodology. The sentences contain words and they deliver the words. The problem is they are giving every word equal treatment. Public speaking is not a democracy but a dictatorship, a world ruled by key words and phrases. Which must absolutely dominate the plebeian words which link and connect the core content together. These keywords are handcrafted for special attention with the view that their elevation during the presentation will drive home the key messages more effectively. Our speaker was a Democrat. As far as not granting special favors to keywords by hitting them harder. Or softer than the rest. He spoke in an even tempo, with the same power throughout the talk. Given his profession, it was natural that he would read the document. That document had been cleared for release, and many eyes would have scrutinized it for any irregularities. It had been thoroughly cleansed of any potential controversy by the time it was presented. There's also simultaneous translation going on, and in fact, The translator had the same text in Japanese to work from. This is a golden way of ensuring that what is meant to be said is coming across exactly as it should in Japanese as well as English. Freestyling is frowned upon because this is where things can be said as an aside, which make the front pages of the media and cause the speaker to lose their job. No wonder caution is the name of the game. Does this mean? That these types of talk are doomed forever to be dull and boring. 
I've mentioned voice modulation through word and phrase emphasis as a way of departing from the usual monotone delivery. The latter is almost 100% guaranteed to put people to sleep. Pauses can add gravitas to what we have said, as we allow our audience a little time to digest the deeper meanings and nuances of what we've just said. We can add gestures to bring strength to a point we are making as we engage our body language and don't just abandon our hands to the task of page turning. We can work the room with eye contact. We can look at individuals in the audience, grab their attention, and then read the next sentence to them. They feel we are appealing directly to them as we again direct our eyes to theirs after we finish the sentence. We cannot be satisfied with a broad sweep of the room with our eye contact, effectively looking at everyone at the same time, and so therefore no one in particular. This is where pausing is so powerful. By stopping what we are saying, we are forcing the audience to look at us, to hang on our next words in anticipation. This is how we can funnel attention. This means the speech has to be designed for this and not created as a mad rush to the end to get all done in the time allocated. Less is more for us, and we should build pauses into the delivery. Find out more. We come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our public courses, but we also are doing custom in-house programs. We do them in both Japanese and English. We do them in our super safe classroom and live online. The show today is being brought to you by, on the 26th and 27th of September, doing our high impact presentations class. That one is being delivered in English. On the 12th and 13th of October, we'll be doing the same one, HIP, high impact presentations in Japanese. On the 13th of October, we'll also start our Dale Cunningham course online. And November 10th, we'll start our three-day version of the Leadership Training for Managers course. Go to our website at www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. Lots and lots of value there for you. To do better in Japan, email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have nearly 2,000 there for you on Tokyo, Japan, Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show on Japan every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And on Saturdays, we release Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders from small, medium enterprises all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic. Leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro TV Shop. Business Pro TV Shop. Get my best selling books on business in Japan The Bible on Selling, Japan Sales Mastery, Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Tonin de Okane wa Muruni Sumi wa Yami Masho, and all are available on Amazon. Welcome back. Our facial expressions are so much more powerful than any slides on a screen. We need to engage our face and combine our expressions with certain keywords and phrases. It may mean becoming more animated in our expression, looking quizzical, upset, concerned, happy, excited, etc. One notable absence from these types of rigid talks is storytelling. Presenters are usually elite, powerful people. They can relate stories about well-known figures. They can drop names and get away with it because it is all congruent with the circles they move in. The story can be cleared for telling, and if necessary, the name of the key person in the story can be hidden. The point can be attached to that individual without identifying them by name and a strong connection made about the key message being communicated. It also allows the message to be humanized, and as an audience, that is very appealing because we may not be able to move in such stratospheric circles, 
but we love hearing about what they are getting up to. Getting our slide deck functioning properly is another simple fix. We don't compromise the approved content, but we can make it more accessible to the audience. As with many others, this speaker often had three or four slides all combined into one, such that the individual parts were too small in size and so hard to see. We should be aiming for one idea per slide and to make the content as large as possible on screen. With a few tweaks, even the most rigid talk can be brought to life in the hands of a polished speaker. Because it is so rare to see this done, most people go through life squelching the life out of their super formal talks in their attempt to conform to the rigidities the organization demands. If we know what we're doing, we can stand out and show how it should be done, no matter how restrictive the occasion. Did you get value from today's show? If you did, then share the love around with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Until the next episode, go out there and apply the learnings from today and become a presentations legend amongst your circle. Thank you for joining me, and please tune in next week. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>